What's up guys? I hope y'all are doing good today. I recently switched over from Team iPhone to Team Samsung, so I finally came over to the light side. Um, loving it so far. This is the 24 Ultra, but out of the box, there's a couple settings that I would change. And I wanted to make sure y'all knew that so that y'all could also update your settings if you see fit. So without further ado, the first thing we're going to do is navigate to the Samsung Bible down here, which is the settings app. So once that is selected, we're going to scroll down to display. Once we're on display, the first two options you're gonna see are light and dark mode. Out of the box, it's gonna be on light mode. Now that's obviously gonna be way brighter. It's gonna use a lot more battery, so I highly recommend switching this to dark mode. Anything that's black is going to be obviously not backlit, so it's gonna save your battery, and it's way less eye strain on you in the long run. The next thing we're gonna go down here and change is, or actually, let me go over these two things right here too. So the eye comfort shield is going to be a blue light filter. So you're not going to have to wear any blue light glasses. So if in your, you're in your bedroom late at night scrolling on TikTok, you can toggle that on if you want to reduce eye strain. And then the new thing for this one is the adaptive color tone. So it's pretty much going to change the white balance based on your environment. So if you're outside or if you're in your living room, it's going to adapt those tones. I like seeing my phone as is, so I do keep that toggled off. The next thing I really would change is the screen resolution. Out of the box, it's gonna be on FHD+. You pay for the phone that's at the top of the food chain, so I highly recommend switching to QHD just so you can get your best bang for your buck. And then if you come on down here, you're gonna to see touch sensitivity because I'm sure if you just got this phone, you're definitely gonna have a screen protector on it because you don't wanna have any scratches or chips or anything on that nice screen. So if you click touch sensitivity and toggle that on, it's gonna make it way more responsive to any haptic feedback from your S Pen or just you clicking around on the apps. So that's what I would change in the settings app. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna to navigate to the camera app. And so on the photo mode, you're obviously gonna have the great ability, which is Samsung's greatest flagship is their camera. I think that Samsung cameras are way better than any spawn of Apple. Um, so you're gonna get a couple of options, 12, 50, and 200. Now with 12, you're gonna get the full zoom capability. So I highly recommend leaving it on 12 for the most part. You can increase that quality to 50, but you're only gonna get the one and five times zoom. So you're gonna lose a little bit of zoom there. And then when you go to the 200 megapixel, you don't have any zoom capability. So I would use 12 and then use 50 and 200 for those great shots that you don't have to actually zoom in for. The next thing I want to talk about is when you navigate to video, you're going to see the quality up here. Now, whenever you first get your phone, it's going to be set to FHD 30, which isn't bad. Uh, 30 is more cinematic. 60 is going to be way more smooth for frame rate, but you can actually bump that up to UHD and then 60. Now I know right here you can see it does have 8K, which is obviously like insane quality, but it is gonna bump it down to 30. So for the most part, and the more, the larger the file size, so the more you go up in resolution and frame rate, the larger the file size it's gonna be. So I recommend doing UHD 60 for the best like roundabout quality photo. The last thing in the camera app that I will talk about is when you go to more over here, you're gonna see some different options. So you have the night, it's going to obviously make like low light situations look way better. You have food shots to make the food colors more vibrant because if you didn't snap it, you didn't eat it. Or the panorama view for those wide landscape views. So anything that you see in this menu that you want, you can actually click it. So this night photo, for instance, and you can actually drag that down here. Leave that in here so you can just easily toggle that on whenever you're in a situation that you want to take that picture. And then when you're done, you can take it, put it back up here leave it, you know, kind of mess with this, put the ones you don't use up here, the one you do use, put it down here. So that's all I'm gonna talk about for the camera app. So the next thing I wanna talk about is going to be the battery. So we're gonna go back to the Samsung Bible settings app. We're gonna find battery, click that, and then we're going to look at battery protection. So out of the box, it's gonna be set on basic. So essentially, we all know that if you keep your battery charged up and plugged up for an extended period of time, it actually degrades the battery over time. So what Samsung does is on the basic, it drops that down to 95 and then keeps going to 100 until you take it off the charger. Now, if you're not gonna keep your phone long, like for me, I want a plan where I can upgrade every year so this isn't too worrisome for me, even though I still do what I'm getting ready to say, and that is adaptive. So what adaptive does is it kind of gets used to your sleeping patterns, so the phone actually knows when you're taking it off the charger every morning. So let's say you go to work at 
you know, eight o'clock or, or school eight o'clock. So when you get up at seven, the phone's going to recognize that after you use it for a little bit. So what it's going to do is it's going to charge that up to 80%. So you're not ever going to have a full battery until the like the last like hour or two before you actually take it off the charger. The phone's going to boost that speed up to 100%. Just so you're not overcharging the battery over time and degrading it. So it's going to save your battery in the long haul. Now you can do maximum, which only keeps it at 80. I don't recommend that because I like having a full 100% phone battery for the whole day. So I would select adaptive here. So that's the best thing you can do for battery protection, in my opinion. All right, guys. So the next thing that we're going to go in here and change is going to do a sound quality because the Samsung actually does have Dolby uh, Atmos. So what you can do is go to settings. You're going to scroll down to sounds and vibration. Give that a tap. And then we're going to scroll down again to sound quality and effects. Now, once you do that, this is going to be toggled off. So this phone does have Dolby Atmos, which is insane. Um, I have this on my PlayStation 5. Love it. Super good sound quality. And you're actually going to notice a difference whenever you do turn this on. So toggle that on. Then you can actually click into Dolby Atmos and you can kind of change this based on your needs. So if you're listening to Spotify music, if you're watching Netflix movie, voice i keep mine on auto i find that to be the best setting to let the phone kind of do the thinking for you and then we're going to go to equalizer so we're going to click equalizer and you actually have a different presets that you can click so you can actually obviously customize this and do your own kind of customization have this where you want it or you can kind of tailor it to what you want if you like to you know thump bass boost um smooth i keep mine on balance but you actually can hear a difference by messing around with this so kind of figure out which one is the best one for you and let me know if you can hear a difference in the sound quality i think you can so that's all we're going to do in the sound setting section all right guys and the last setting that we're going to mess with is going to be the edge panels um so whether you know it or not my brother actually got the same phone and didn't know this was on here so if you, you see this little bar right here you can actually pull that out and it's going to bring out an edge panel so you can kind of scroll through those and uh, i think out of the box it's going to just have these apps right here you can actually change this by going to the settings, so go back to the Samsung Bible. We're then going to navigate to display again. So here's display. If you scroll down right here, you're going to eventually see edge panels. It should be toggled on. If not, you can toggle on if you want to. Click that, click it on. So you can actually go in here, and like I said, out of the box, it's going to have the apps. You can kind of scroll through here and kind of pick which ones you want on here. I have two or three selected, and then once you do that, you can actually go down here to handle. So like I said before, my brother didn't know it because he didn't even look for this handle based on his background. So you can actually click handle, change the color. As you can see, it's changing right here to whatever color you want to. You can make it as transparent as you want to. Um, I tend to keep mine traditional and then just kind of make it a little more visible. And then you can actually make that as large of a paddle as you want or as small. I kind of go somewhere in the middle, just big enough for my thumb to kind of flick across. And you can change the width of it too. If you, <laughs> I keep mine pretty thin. Um, that's what I recommend doing to kind of mess around with that. Let me know um, if y'all like the edge panels. Probably one of my favorite features on here. It's just like a quick little, quick menu. Just kind of scroll through. It'll keep your, you know, most frequently used up here. And then you can kind of go in here and you can actually click this um, pencil button and you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want in here. So that's really nice. Just click the minus button and then kind of drag the one you want over. You can keep up to, I think, six, five or six in here. I'm just going to mess around with it. That's probably one of my favorite features, though, of the edge panel. So, so just a bonus tip, you can actually pull your little drop down menu for your control center here. Pull that down. So yours should be white and gray, kind of like these bar right here. You can actually change this. So what you're going to do is hold down the wallpaper. We're going to go over here to wallpaper and style. And then we're actually going to choose color palette. Now what you can do, is you want to toggle this on, is you can actually, it should be toggled off out of the box, toggle it on. You can actually pick colors based on your wallpaper, which is what I did, or you can click here and go to basic and uh, pick a color. So let's just pick, let's just pick green. So you can see it changes it to green. Once I hit apply, once I go back out, I'm going to Pull my drop down. You can see these are now green. It just gives it a different color. It kind of makes it easier for you to kind of see what's going on versus just the, you know, the, the white and gray out of the box. So that's just a little bonus tip. Let me know if what tips y'all want to see in the future. If y'all want to see some apps and stuff that I use 
um, and let me know how y'all feel about the setting changes that I made, if y'all did them, if you liked them. Please give this video a like and subscribe, and we will catch y'all on the next one. Peace.